Good morning, everybody. This is Sarah with Harrisburg Project. And believe it or not, today is August 1st. And I have a huge group today because you can't get into iStar. So why not come join me? So today we're gonna go over what you can do once iStar opens back up. So we'll go over the rollover process, what is happening right now, um, and then what you can do uh, once you're able to get back into the system. So if you have not attended a training with us before, you can ask questions during the session in the question pod. If you do not see a GoToWebinar menu, look for an orange arrow. If you click on that, it should open up a flyout that has some options there. One, again, will be the questions pod. Another one will be your handouts pod. So if you didn't get the handout previous to the session today, you can get that PDF from the session. Um, it'll, of course, stay on our website and we are recording the session today. So that also will go on our website under hot topics. Um, if you want to come back and, and listen to the session again, or if you miss something or have to step away, I also will have a repeat session on this later in the month. So we will go ahead and get started. So what happens today, the rollover, who's doing the rollover is B. So you do not have to create your new year. They're going to create the new year. And then the next couple of slides, we'll talk about what is actually happening and what you can expect when you open iStar up later today when it opens. So it's happening today, August 1st. We try to do it every year on August 1st. So far, we've been able to do that without hitting a weekend, but we're probably going to run into some issues in the next couple of years. So, so what is happening during the rollover? So it's looking at your student approval records and any of those that had dates in the future are going to roll into the new year and will not remain in the previous year. So if you have been working ahead and um, working on your records for the new year and putting in dates, uh, after August 1st, so if you knew the first day of school and you have been putting in records for the future, those records will roll into the new year, okay? And they will not be in the previous year anymore because you didn't need them there to begin with. So it does a little bit of cleanup. Student approval records that do not have an end date will roll into the new year. So if you exited your graduates or anything like that, you're not gonna see them in the new year and you don't want to. So they will remain in the previous year archived and they will not be in the new year. Now, we had some questions already yesterday and today about some people who either missed some, missed some exits or didn't know they needed to, needed to do that, things like that. That's okay. So what do you do whenever you get into the new year, either later today or later this month, you don't have to do this immediately, but if you failed to exit students, then you delete them and the system will ask you for the exit data at that point. Okay, so I think you're able to work on those exits through around the middle of October. Okay, so you've got plenty of time. And keep in mind, that always is going to happen a little bit because you can't predict all the students that won't return um, in the new year. So you may have students move over the summer or anything like that where they don't return. So you're always going to have some deletes and exit data in the new year. So don't panic if you if you missed any or missed them all because you can do it in the new year. All of your personnel approval records will roll over. Remember, we don't have begin and end dates or start and stop dates on personnel. So it's just going to be an exact copy. Your district and co-op relationship permissions will roll from 23 to 24, 25. So that means if you are a co-op and you manage data for um, six of your 10 districts, um, that relationship in iStar will roll over, will know um, what, what to expect from the co-op versus those remaining four districts. So it lets us know who manages the data. Your caseload definitions, if you use caseload, will also roll over. So again, an exact replica will be in the new year. You will be able to edit that in the new year if you need to, and you will not, again, be changing anything in the previous year. So through all these changes, everything is archived in the last school year. So records that should be in that year will not change. Your program definitions, again, this is an optional piece, but a popular piece. Those definitions will roll over. I highly recommend that you clean those program definitions up when you get the opportunity. Um, going through claim season this time, I saw a lot of carryover from years and years and years. First of all, it's so confusing. 
Um, and, and also it's just a huge list that you have to weed through and it's going to, to take you more time to do that. So if you're not going to reuse programs from year to year, um, get rid of them, just delete them. We can always make new ones. Um, but that's a good, it's a good time to kind of evaluate that and see, we just went through claims, you know, what did it look like? What did you use? What would your plan be for the new year? Indicator in 11 and 13 will roll over. So no changes with those. If you use transportation, I don't know that anyone uses transportation in ISTAR, but if you do, those records will roll over as well. Your districts that are used on your personnel approval records will roll over. So again, this applies to a co-op district relationship. Any salaries that you had entered into personnel for student claims so maybe not all your personnel maybe some of them if you didn't use the program definition you may not have any salaries okay that's okay if you have them in they do roll over then the districts that are used on the student approval records will roll over so that means that your lea list maintenance will roll over so whatever options you have in your serving drop downs those will remain the same your participation days and your student claims costs will roll over and your student caseload data will roll over. So if you use caseload, the definition rolls over, but also the records that are attached to those definitions roll over. Okay, so once the rollover is complete, then ISB will open ISTAR back up today and you will be able to come in and make changes on that new year. Now, most of you probably are not interested in touching every record, so we have what is called a mass change, and that gives you the opportunity to do a lot of the data entry in mass. Is it perfect? No. We always have requests on things to be added. Um, some of you may know, some not, but ISB is working on developing an upgraded version of ISTAR, and we have a lot of enhancements that will be uh, there for mass change in that system. Okay, so it's not something that we are ignoring, um, but I don't want to lead everyone to believe that there still won't be some manual data entry to do on individual records. That's just the way it is, but this helps you out a lot. So. You'll go into mass change. You have to be a district security administrator. So if you don't have the admin drop down, you need, either need to get access to that by putting in a security request and having someone approve that, or you can work with someone else who has that access level to go through the mass change. So the first thing we're looking at is changing the begin dates on your student approval records. This will, will be the biggie. Um, it will help you out immensely you have two different options on how you want to do this you can use your school calendar if it is available i have seen a lot in our area that are available we're getting ready to start school so i would assume this shouldn't be an issue but if it is you can also manually put in begin dates so you can say i want to change my dates by resident district or serving district it's up to you whatever works out best. And you can type in a begin date here and hit use for all. Or if you say use school calendar, you'll see that it will populate the begin dates automatically. So several options there. I would try to go this route first, hit use school calendar first. Again, you can choose by which district you want to change them and see if you get those populated. If so, that's awesome and move on. The other option is to use a singular begin date, um, hit use for all, or you can just go in and manually type in the begin dates. So you have several options there uh, of how you want to do that. You may use a combination of the use for all and then go back and edit a couple. Um, if you're a standalone district and you're only worrying about your, your own district, then this isn't gonna be you know, a big deal. You're gonna put in one date and move on. If you're a co-op, of course it gets a little more complicated you're going to have more resident districts to choose from serving districts etc so um, you have some options there on how you want to do that if you use caseload then you can also 
um, go through the same or similar process as with the student approval records. If you don't use caseload, then you just uncheck the box. So if you uncheck the box, then the system knows that you do not intend uh, to have data entered here and you do not intend to have these dates changed, um, especially if they don't exist if you're not using it. But if you do use it, then you make sure the box is checked. You can do this by class location or by class. You can use the, uh, the all, so you can type in a date, hit use, use for all. Um, you can do it again by your class location. You can do it by class. If you type in a date again and hit use for all, but you need to go through a couple of them and change them, that's fine. But again, a lot of times if you're a standalone district, a singular district working on this, your begin dates, your start dates are all gonna be the same. The only time it might be a little bit different is if you have a class in here that's for pre-K and maybe they don't start the same day as the rest of the kids. Maybe it's four or five days after the first day. Okay. All right, we have a question. What about kids who have a different serving school but we serve them for speech? Do we use our school calendar or their school start date? Well, you're gonna get, typically you're gonna be reimbursed. If, if it's a reimbursable record, it's gonna be reimbursed on um, the resident districts per cap. So it's really up to you whether you want to use the resident or the serving. I would look more at what fund code are they um, if you're going to be running reports, what would be more beneficial to you? Those kinds of things. Okay. Remember that if you're not going to use a particular area that you uncheck that box, Okay, so case we have a lot of calls on that. Um, you just want to make sure that you uncheck the area or if you get down in your, di your districts and you don't have a begin date for one of them and you wanna come back later and put that one in, just make sure you uncheck it. So anything you're not going to address needs to be unchecked. So if you get over and you, hit, you try to complete the process, then you're going to get an error. And a lot of times when we get calls on the air, it's because you indicated that you were going to address a, a, a section, but you didn't, all right? Um, is the process the same for students who are attending private residential schools? So you should see the private facilities in your um, selections. I think that's what you're asking. You'll, you should see your public districts and your private facilities. So if you know the begin dates, you can use them there. Now for residential, they're all gonna have to be September 1st, typically or after. So tuition and residential will be different. All right, you can use the mass change function more than once. So if you come in, okay, good. That is what she was asking, good. All right, so if you come in today, um, and you don't have to do this today, um, but if you come in today and you say, okay, I've got a little bit of this information, but I don't have everything. You can go ahead and work on the districts that you know the dates for and things like that, and then you can come back in later. What you don't wanna do is wait too long, okay? So once you start doing data entry and doing end ads on your records, you don't want to come in and do mass changes on begin dates because if you have little Johnny and you've done an end ad on him already, it's going to change the begin date on each of his records and we don't want that. So that's going to cause an overlap and that's just going to mess things up. So we don't want to do that, but I don't want you to think that it's a one and done as you're preparing for the new year. Okay. Another thing about, I mentioned earlier, you know, you don't have to do this today. And we honestly prefer that you, you know, we don't want um, 500 districts going in and doing this today. It's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be 
um, slow. It's going to take a long time to complete. So if you're not ready to do this, by all means, we're okay with that. You have plenty of time to get this done. All right. So again, what I said just a minute ago about be careful when you're doing this. Don't wait until it's too late. We don't want this going on um, after you've already done end ads. All right. So that's really important as far as the dates pieces go. After that, it's not as big of a deal really when you do the mass changes on the rest of this because we're just going to clear some things out and do some cleanup. So the dates are really important. You want to, again, make sure that you're getting that done before you start data entry. In other words, before you start doing end ads and making changes in the system, make sure that your dates are in order. If they're not, just don't do mass change again, okay? You may have to do some manual work. Now, as far as the cleanup goes, and again, this doesn't really hinge on um, a time period other than we do shut mass change off, um, I believe October 1st. The first one is to detach all the programs from the fax records or the approval records. So if you want to break that tie and start fresh, then you would want to do that. So what it'll do is it would just blank out the program name on the student approval record and it will also, uh, on the approval record and the claim record, but it will also, um, was I, I lost my train of thought. Oh, it will also clear out the S5066B on that program. So you're kind of starting from that blank slate. So if you want to keep the same programs, then they'll be clear every year when you get started on claims. It's really confusing whenever we go to work on claims and there's so much data from the previous year there. Um, it looks like maybe, oh, well, you know, if you have someone who's not familiar and they come in and they get an email that says they need to do claims and they come in and look and there's already data there, they're going to be like, oh, well, it's already done. I don't have to do anything. But it's the previous year's data, so it, it's, it's not good. So another thing, I, I would recommend this, clearing the personnel salaries on the records if you use the program definition. So where we get those salaries here on the P5066B, um, I would clear those because odds are they're not going to be exactly the same every year for those people. Maybe if you know for sure certain people will, then maybe this isn't an option for you. But again, I really like to start from that clean slate when we get started in spring on the new programs. So if you do use the program definition, then um, you may want to consider clearing the personnel salaries. And then I 100% recommend clearing the days and the costs. So what it's going to do is clear the participation days and the costs on those records. Again, these are all going to be moot when we start to do claims for next summer. They're, these costs are not going to be the same. Even if you use per cap and did the bare minimum on claims, your per cap is not going to be the same next year. Okay, so I would 100% recommend clearing the days and the costs. Remember, even though you're doing this, this is all in the 24-25 school year. Nothing is happening in the previous year. That is all locked and archived. So it's not going to change that. We are not ruining your programs in the previous year or having any effect on that. We're leaving that in the past, but we want to move forward with the clean slate. So again, I would doubt that any of these costs would be the same for the next school year. So if you come in and look and it's all blanked out, that is an awesome place to start. Especially, again, um, you know, you have to also think about what if you aren't going to be in this position as much next year and someone else is going to be. Um, you know, maybe you're going to move on to something, a different part, and somebody else is going to do claims next year. They're going to be awfully confused if they come in and there's all these numbers there. So just keep that in mind when you're making these decisions. Okay. So. Once you have gone through those sections and decided what you want to do and made your selections, you're going to see a button that says make changes. When you click that button, um, you're going to see a status window. If nothing starts to print in the status, then odds are there are a lot of people doing mass change at the same time. So you may get into a queue for when it's your turn and you can hit the refresh button until you do start to see the progress. And by progress, I mean it will tell you, you know, deleted this many record or this many um, salaries, 
uh, change the date on this many uh, records for such and such district. So it tells you what happened. And then you can even print a report if you want to. I don't know what you would want to do with it, but you can print a report um, for the mass changes that you do. The best thing that you go and do at that point is go look at the data. Just go into your approvals and hit search and, and just look down over there at the begin date and see, did it work? Okay, I'm sure it will. If, it, if you get an error message after you hit the make changes, the first thing you need to make sure is that if you checked an area that you provided data for it. So again, that's the most common issue that we see. Okay, so keep in mind that when you go in and you look at your data this year, after you do the rollover, you're gonna have a lot of errors. So I would not waste your time rechecking edits right now. Most districts, we did have one district, one district that I know of that started school yesterday, but most districts have not started yet. So you're gonna have an error because your begin date hasn't occurred yet. As soon as you start school, those will be eliminated because the students will be um, starting on the day that the, that the calendar starts. So those are eliminated on their own, but you're also gonna have CIS errors. You're not gonna have enrollments, okay? So that is expected. CIS is down right now too. Um, they'll probably be down for a week. So you're not gonna see any enrollments coming in for a while. Sometimes it may be 10 to 15 days after the first day of school. Um, if, and honestly, they have all the way up through, I believe November before they actually have to have an upload in the system. So um, if you start to see in September that you don't have any enrollments, don't enter, then I would start looking for your CIS person and talking to them and tell them, you know, it's important and you need to start working on errors and things like that. But you're going to have an error on every single record today when you open this up. Again, begin date errors and enrollment errors. So don't worry about those. This is not the time of year to be rechecking edits. Also, don't forget that if you have private facility claims that you need to do or summer term orphans, that we will be doing that in the previous school year. So you need to be sure that you're changing your drop down for school year and that your, that your screen, back, the background of your screen is a pink or salmon color. That lets you know that you're not in the current school year. Okay, so you can still get back into the previous year to finish up your claims, all right? Okay, so I will take any questions that anybody has on mass change. Um, I don't know if I said this earlier, but usually rollover doesn't take as much time at all, but they did set aside the whole day. So hopefully it will be open sooner than that. Um, but again, there are no guarantees. So they always wanna set aside the whole day. Uh, nothing has changed this year with the rollover. It's the same as it has been. So hopefully everything goes smoothly. It had been tested already. So um, I don't expect any issues and, and it should be, again, a smooth transition. So hopefully you won't uh, be kicked out all day, uh, but it is a possibility. So I will take any questions that anybody has. Um, if you need to get going, uh, we will catch you at the next session. Okay, it looks like everybody is hanging up and getting back to work. So I, again, hope to see you guys in the next session. We're gonna have a full schedule coming up for the fall. Uh, thank you all for attending. And remember, if you have questions, please call or email us. We're happy to help. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.